Again, you control the dopamine with a click of a mouse. So you're watching a, sh a movie, the video, two minute video. Most, by the way, most videos are only about 30 seconds or ever seen of a video four, mini video, four clicks to another video. This is uh, research shows. So it's interesting for a second, it starts to get boring, click, gets boring, click, gets boring, click. Also, dopamine levels based on genres. So, so heterosexual sex doesn't do anything for you anymore? Well, gay and lesbian sex, maybe, maybe a little bit more than maybe tran, tra, uh, transsexual or whatever. So again, consequence. So what's happening? We get all this exposure to this amazing super stimulus. We become addicted. Two things about addiction that I want to just briefly talk about is the concept of sensitization and the concept of desensitization. Sensitization basically means that when you are engaged in that very um, engaged in, say, pornography, uh, super stimulus, when you first come across it, you basically become hypersensitive. You actually, any thought, any memory will make you want to crave it. It's, you become super sensitized. That's only initially. So what ends up happening is only with the addiction you get these really high levels, the high levels of, of porn. And then everything else in your life seems even normal, eh, not, so, not so interesting. So what can end up happening is a, a sight, a smell, a, a computer screen, can cause you intense cravings, can it co uh, cause these intense emotions or cravings, anticipation, uh, and trigger you to, to uh, activate your rewards and, and engage in pornography. Now here is a PET scan to healthy volunteers and compulsive pornography users. Notice that these the areas in the limbic center light up more. It's, they're sensitized. Nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Nerve cells that fire together, wire together. So what we're doing is we're promoting the pathway, the, the abnormal pathway. Every time we engage in a, uh, in a super stimulus pornography, we, we make the pathway stronger. Now what I mean by that is look at the next slide. We'll get to that in a second. So you see this next slide here. You see how here there are connections? So you're watching porn, it's a certain pathway, you hijack that pathway in the brain, you do it over and over, and you start getting, you see how it's much more, uh, much more synapses and much more of a connection, much, and, a, and a more robust pathway. And why this happens is delta FOS B. Several studies show that if you have do a lot of dopamine surging, a lot of dopamine in your brain, be it edging or uh, watching porn multiple times, you get accumulation of delta FOS B. And delta FOS B is thought to cause rewiring of the brain. So what happens is continue, continued use leads to a preferred path. So whenever you want to have that feeling, Instead of engaging with your significant other, you are going to the computer screen. You are seeking the preferred, easier pathway. To the point where that's just the easiest way to go. So again, you have competing sexual pathways. You've got the porn pathway, or the drug pathway, and then you have doing it with real people, like the, the normal way, or even fantasizing about real people, that would be the white pathway. They both, as you notice, they both bombard the uh, reward center, the, the uh, nucleus accumbens. So again, you've got these two pathways. And you also, uh, we'll talk more about the prefrontal cortex in a minute. So what happens is, if you continue to engage in this pathway, what's going to happen in the pathway? It's a big, it's going to become more robust. What wires together, fires together. So what ends up happening is you get a more robust pathway. What happens to the, the, to the, the, the normal, normal pathway with real people? What ends up happening? It starts deteriorating. Remember, the brain is very neuroplastic and malleable. It changes. It's big time. So what ends up happening is you become conditioned. You become conditioned to preferring pornography. You become conditioned to being alone, to be a voyeur. To be watching, not to actually participate in the act. So you actually prefer watching. You actually, you know, uh, you know, you're constantly seeking and searching, being alone, avoiding social gatherings and so forth. You become conditioned. Now, versus real, what we really want to be is touch, be touched, smells, emotional connection, interaction with people, real stuff. 
Now again, when, when you have intimacy, are you, or you know, if there's no, it's, it's not that you're just watching, it's active, whereas porn is more passive. So how do we recover from porn induced erectile dysfunction? It's obviously simplistically is just to do whatever we can to weaken this pathway and do whatever we can to increase this pathway. The desensitization, the desensitization is kind of like a numbing response, meaning you look at your partner, you look at an older, maybe something more like, you know, a, you're, you're a real person, and there is no, there is no excitement because you've kind of burned out your dopamine. So it's basically it's chronic low dopamine signaling. So you get tolerance and escalation. When, you when you're tolerant to something, you, in order to get that buzz, in order to feel good to get that hit, you need something more. So normal teenage stuff becomes bizarre, hardcore, new fetishes, bizarre fetishes, things you would never even think that you would ever look at as a result of this. Again, we talked about the brain penis mismatch. Now, it's very important to understand that there is loss of brain matter with this desensitization, and the delta plus B and the rewiring of the brain actually causes changes in your brain. We'll talk a little bit about hypofrontality and atrophy of your prefrontal cortex. You actually will start to diminish your executive condition. You won't be able to, to tolerate stress as well. You won't be able to think as well. You won't be able to tolerate everyday problems because you start to have a contraction or an atrophy of your prefrontal cortex. This is big time stuff. Now again, with desensitization, the concept is you lose here, very simple picture here. Okay, normal, notice, notice all the receptors and the neurotransmitters, and look at the second picture. Notice fewer receptors, fewer dopamine, uh, fewer neurotransmitters. So again, the body has a way of establishing what? Homeostasis. Again, this is what I just talked about. So a couple other brain changes that are big time is that you will start losing gray matter in your prefrontal cortex called hypofrontality. You will have an alteration to your stress response. Not able to handle it, else. Get, get angry fast, faster. Not able to solve problems. Minor stress, you go home, you have a minor stress, what's the way to go? You don't want to deal with your significant other. Where do you go? To the computer screen. It's easy. And you can see what kind of problems that could potentially lead to in family. And then it becomes self-medication. In closer, secondary problems to the porn induced erectile dysfunction. Absolutely horrible sex education. Young men, children, men are learning sexual acts that are in no way modeled after reality. Women are on the on the, are in these, these, these films are nothing but props and objects that become objectified. You start acting out. Something you thought you would never do to somebody. Maybe you're a little, maybe you start to get into the rape genre, or you start getting into uh, different genres of sex, and then you start watching and watching, and when it comes time, you start to act out. And you can see there are many studies that show that rape is on the rise. Spousal abuse on the rise. And, and a big contributing factor is the pornography. Destruction of the family, look at this statistic. When one spouse is engaged in pornography, 68, and I put 70%, it's really 68%, 68% decrease in sexual activity. Basically living separate lives, and then just basically complete destruction of the family. Also, increased anxiety. Further, so you're, you're starting to have, you know, your erections aren't as good, you start getting anxious, or you're anxious because kind of it's a religious taboo, and you start getting more anxious, get further ED, uh, uh, ED, and then suicidal ideation. I saw several reports, uh, forums, where members in the forum said, I want to kill myself. 22-year-old can't get an erection and wants to kill himself. Several of these. This is not, this is not uncommon. And, it's, and the incidence is only increasing. It is only increasing. And then an interesting book by Philip Zimbardo, uh, uh, he wrote a book called The Demise of Men. The Demise of Men. 
We are, the younger men have severe lack of ambition. Watching porn at work, when they come home from work, all they do is engage in porn or video games. <coughs> and what's end up happening is we become ineffective and not like, uh, ineffective as men. I think this picture kind of explains, explains it all.